What's up everyone, this is Laiyosh. Welcome back to Life Study Library. Today we're going to be talking about thinking about the wonderful stuff, about the existence of happy things, about how happy you are that you've met your romantic partner, or won the tournament, or started a YouTube channel. Stuff like positive thinking indicates that thinking or even imagining about the existence of a positive event leads to making you feel happy and satisfied. I mean, it's an assessment that totally makes sense. However, recent studies might suggest otherwise, about not only the reversing of the previous statement, but the actual method that actually leads you to become happy. Places like the University of Virginia points out that, uh, I'm just going to straight up say it, it claims that rather than thinking about the existence of a happy occurrence, what actually makes people feel happy is thinking about the lack of a happy occurrence. So rather than saying, I'm so glad you and I met, saying, imagine what would I've become if we didn't meet. Now, we're going to look at the details. Likewise, in this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you're interested and want to watch more of my past and my future content, make sure to subscribe to my channel as that act tremendously supports me and is appreciated so much. Again, thank you for subscribing. And now, let's continue with the video. So the study took a total of 65 college students and asked them to talk about an event that made them feel happy. So stuff like getting good grades makes them feel positive, or going to the gym to work out makes them feel satisfied, or how much money or material possessions they have. The participants were tasked to talk about this in detail. Next, the samples were asked to talk about what might have been the case if the things that made them happy were absent from their lives. How you might have been if you didn't get good grades, or weren't going to the gym, or didn't have money. Afterwards, they were measured their current state of happiness on a 7 point scale. They measured how happy they felt after talking about the existence or the non-existence of the happy events. The results showed that, despite popular assumption, Talking about how people would have been if the happy event didn't happen, this was the one that correlated with higher level of positive state. People who talked about how life would have been if they hadn't met their spouse rated higher on their positive emotional state than those who simply talked about how happy they were that they were with their spouse. And at this point, I want to pause and mention this one detail. This study is actually a culmination of this study is actually a culmination of multiple experiments with different study conditions, and surprisingly, there were more than one conditions where thinking about the existence of a happy event actually made people happy. So pretty much we got mixed results. How is this the case? And the reason has to do with this. Remember the 7 point scale the samples were tasked to determine their level of current happiness? Well, they actually did this by scaling how much happiness they felt based on different conditions of surprising versus unsurprising. They were asked, how surprising or unsurprising are your stories about the happy events? Did you think, the, did you think your story of how happy you are with your partner, or the story of what you would have been if you didn't meet your partner, how surprising or unsurprising was it? They were also asked, they were also asked how well they thought they understood why or how the event occurred how difficult it was to explain to words, along with how mysterious, ordinary, and easy to control the event seemed. The researchers measured all this and looked at the correlation with how happy the samples became. To this, thinking about the existence of a happy event positively correlated with increased happiness only when the study condition was set to make the event surprising in any way. So why does the existence of a happy event correlate with feeling happy only when the samples are surprised by it? The answer goes like this. So, humans are creatures of adaptation. We adapt to different situations at a remarkable speed. And by adapting, we feel as if uh, something that caused suffering 10 minutes ago isn't so bad after all once you get used to it. That's right, you get used to it. If you only think about the existence of a happy event, you'll soon get used to the happy feeling, causing it to stop being special, and your emotion don't end up in a happy state. On the other hand, thinking about the possibility of the absence of a happy event allows the event to always be special and you value it as something that could have occurred differently. Simultaneously, thinking about the existence of a happy event will remain special if the existence is surprising to you, when the existence or the absence of the happy event made you feel, wow, it's surprising that the event even happened considering how slim the chances were back then. Something like that. This causes the event to be special. Thus, people will appreciate it more and let the event be and let the event be the reminder of their positive emotion. 
So to sum it up, the University of Virginia suggests that while it is easy for us to assume that we can become happy by thinking about positive events or positive thinking or by acknowledging the existence of whatever is making you feel happy, it, it actually does not correlate with becoming happy unless you think about how surprising the existence of the happy event is. What does actually make you happy is thinking about the possible thinking about the possibility that the happy event might have not entered your life. It will constantly point out that this event is something special and you are lucky to be able to attain or experience it. And by the way, I know that I mentioned this as an example multiple times in this video, but this whole thing works beyond this whole thing works beyond being happy by exercising or having a lot of money or owning a lot of stuff. This phenomenon works not just in your own world, but with the people who you share your life with. The best example being romantic partners. Another study took 88 samples who reported were currently in a romantic relationship. They first measured the baseline level of satisfaction to their relationship. After two weeks, the samples were organized into three groups. The first group wrote in detail how they met their partner, how they started dating, and then how they ended up together for about 15 to 20 minutes. The second group wrote for the same amount of time about how they might have never met their partner, how they might have never dated, and how they might have never ended up together. The third group was separated into three conditions. Those who wrote about the same stuff as the first group, except not with the romantic partner, but a friend. Those who wrote about their friend with the same plot as the second group, and those who wrote about random stuff. The results showed that, as predicted, samples in the absent condition showed the highest increase in their satisfaction. However, there's another part of the study that took 16 participants as forecasters who guessed ha who guessed who guessed which condition would show the greatest increase in happiness. The, researcher, the researchers wanted to see how aware people were about the surprising benefits of the absent condition. Results showed that 14 out of 16 samples guessed wrong and predicted that the existence condition would increase happiness and the absence condition would make people feel worse. Possible reason is thought to be because many people like talking about their romantic relationship and how they ended up together with their partner because it makes them feel good about their relationship. But you know exactly where this is headed to. You talk about it, you feel, you feel so good about your relationship, you think you have the perfect partner, you come home and face reality, that they have flaws, many of them you forgot because your mind was too busy feeling good, and you're not feeling happy or satisfied anymore. The main message is this. Thinking or talking about the existence of a happy thing or an event makes you get used to it, thus causing it to stop being special. So if you want to be happy, you have to think about the alternative path that might have existed if the thing or the event was absent from your life. So that was pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed this episode. So as we've seen, having standards or expectations that are too high will always be a no-no with honestly everything in life. But many people make the mistake of trying so hard to become happy and end up torn apart, dreading the reality that their effort is leading to a fruitless result. But there is a pretty well-known teaching on becoming happy called Mindfulness. And that's the book I'm going to recommend today. Today's book, The Happiness Trap, How to Stop Struggling and Start Living, A Guide to ACT by Russ Harris. The book teaches you how to develop a satisfying and meaningful life by overcoming depression, stress, anxiety, and any other negativities that are holding you back. It does this through the idea of ACT, or Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. What this does is that, way too many people say you can be happy and be satisfied if you become confident. But having confidence just for the sake of it is meaningless because you don't have a reason to be confident. Rather, ACT takes the approach of accepting all of your life, the good, bad, and the ugly. You allow them to exist in your life as a part of you instead of shoving it away. And then you can fix the parts that you want to improve with commitment. Even the Bible has a quote that says, God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the knowledge to know the difference. Part of the reason why I read so much is to gain knowledge to do exactly this. So that was everything from me. I have, the, I, have, I have the link to the book down at the description, along with few other picks that I thought really changed my life. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in another video. Bye!